We're going to get started with questions, and the first one will be from Ryan Aber from the Oklahoman, and then we'll go with Joe Bettner. Yeah, Delarian, uh, good to see you again. Uh, obviously, uh, this defense took a, some steps forward last year, especially as it relates to turnovers. What are some of the areas uh, where you feel like uh, this defense overall uh, can uh, take further steps? And uh, you know, what, what are the biggest emphasis of this spring uh, for you especially? Um, I feel like as a defense, first off, guys, in order for us to take the next step, I feel like guys need to gain, gain a trust of knowing that, you know, for example, if, if I have a zone, like knowing that I'm going to play that zone to the best of my ability so they don't have to overdo their job just because they understand that I'm going to do mine. And being able to play together as a unit, first and foremost, will, will lead us in the right direction because <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of defenses out there that really don't have a trust, that they really don't trust each other enough. So it's kind of like, you know, they're all over the place. And that doesn't happen much with us, but I do see I do see it at times. But if we can just <clears throat> learn how to, you know, trust one another and like know that I got your back no matter what, then you know we'll we'll be able to move in the next direction. Appreciate it, Jalaren. Thank you. Go to Joe Bettner and then Jason Kersey. Hey, Delarian, I wanted to ask you specifically about Jeremiah Cradell. Just from your position as a leader on this team, I'm curious what you've seen from him just as far as the work he's put in for the, over the past two years and uh, just kind of your expectation for him as far as a guy that can maybe provide to the secondary. Right. Even even before, you know, Cradell got put into this role, every offseason he utilizes it to the best of his ability, like, Anytime, you know, we have a break or something like that, and then we come back to do like DB drills or like right now how we came back for spring ball, you always see some type of improvement from him. And so I'm not I'm not even shocked, you know, that I actually like saw some great things from him today and even leading up to this, you know, when we're doing drills and things like that. You know, the biggest jump that Cordell has taken, he's gotten he's become a smarter football player. Like even though he didn't have a lot of snaps last year, you know, he got in, he got in sometimes, you know, played some some snaps for the defense, but he's gained a different level of smartness, you know, for his position. He's, he's, he knows that when he sees something, you know, it's, it's time to go. Like he doesn't second guess himself at all. Like he, he's just getting smarter. And like I said, he's always improving whenever we have an off season or uh, some time away from the season. So uh, Cordell, you know, looking forward to him having a huge season and helping us out a lot on defense. Thanks so much, Larry. So Jason Kersey and then John Hoover. Yeah, you know, just as the uh, as the talent level has improved in, in the secondary, I'm, I'm just wondering, guys like you and Pat, established starters, how much on uh, how much you guys have to kind of stay on your toes uh, to, to hold on to those spots? Right, like you said, you know, a lot of competition right now in the, uh, in the defensive back room, and you know, I, I actually love it. Because at the end of the day, it's making me and Pat better. At, collectively, as a whole, it's making the whole group uh, better. Because, you know, those guys are producing day in and day out. So that's making us produce day in and day out. You know, no one has time to, you know, have an off day. Or, you know, because it's days when guys come in, they don't feel like practicing. But if you understand that the guy in front of you or the guy behind you is going to come in, he's going to work work, uh, work his butt off. And, you know, he's going to make plays. And... That kind of translates. So everyone is, you know, pushing each other, and at the end of the day, we're getting better as a unit. So I kind of, I kind of like that, you know, after day one, you know, seeing what guys can actually do, even though you know we don't have shoulder pads on right now, but seeing what guys can do, seeing them make plays, you know, I'm excited for them, and I'm also excited to get this thing rolling because, like I said, with them, with them being able to do that, it's just going to make us better as a unit. Thanks a lot, man. Hey, John Hoover, and then Kerry Murdoch. Hey, Delarian. Um, statistically, you guys are exactly where you were in spring practice last year. You got one under your belt. So uh, I've asked guys today about not taking that for granted and, you know, using the time you have to get better. And Coach Grinch said you could see the result in the fall of not having spring practice. I wonder from your perspective, take me back to last year, what a shocker it was when they finally came out and told you, hey, no, no spring ball this year. It's over. And then 
how you guys kind of project that going forward this year to, to I don't know, be better, make sure you don't take it for granted. Right. Uh, going back to, you know, what you said about Coach Grinch when, whenever we came back from fall camp last year, and you could tell that we didn't have a, a spring ball because it kind of led to us having a slow start into fall camp and things like that. And so whenever they told us last year, you know, that that we were, go, were, were that we were going to get sent home for a few weeks, you know, I kind of didn't even believe it. Like I had, you know, saw, of course, we all saw that the NBA had, you know, shut down and things like that. But I'm like, there's no way that they're sending us home for two weeks. And, you know, we'll be back in no time. I'm thinking, you know, maybe, you know, just something for right now. And, you know, once two weeks led, led into two months, I'm like, wow, you know, th this thing is actually crazy. So uh, we were just, you know, sitting on Zoom, trying to come together as a team, you know, trying to get to to know each other. Of course, we had some early enrollees. So we had those, you know, we had those guys on Zoom, you know, kind of telling about themselves and we were telling about ourselves as the old, as the, as the old guys. And, you know, with them being able to get, with, with us being able to have spring this year, man, you, we can't afford to take it for granted because, you know, we, we, we experienced the slow start that we had into fall camp last year just because we didn't have spring ball. So, I mean, we got, we got to cherish every single day because COVID is still out there. You know, it's still real. It still has a huge impact on the world. You know, guys are, you know, getting vac vaccinated and things like that. But, you know, we still have to, the biggest thing is we still have to know that COVID is out there and it's still real and that it still can affect us in a negative way. So we just have to stay on our toes with, uh, you know, keeping our mask on and things like that. I appreciate it, Larry. Thank you. Hey, Kerry Murdoch and then James Hale. Hey, Delarian, uh, good afternoon. You, you mentioned vaccinations. How, how much of a discussion is that with you and your teammates? Uh, do you think that there are guys that, you know, just feel like they, that's not something that they want to do? And, and uh, I don't know, how do you guys handle that as teammates? And, and I don't know, maybe having to support someone that doesn't agree with something like that. Right. Just like you just said about, you know, having to support someone, you know, we've been having those conversations on and off because there are, there are pros and cons to that. You know, if you, if you get vaccinated, then, you know, you don't get hit on the con contact tracing, you know, during the season. So you don't have to miss games. Um, also, you know, you don't have to get tested anymore. So, I mean, it's, it's a, guys are, are really, you know, pushing each other, you know, to go out and get it because at the end of the day, that can help us as a football team because we don't have guys, you know, fought, uh, losing, uh, missing games just because, you know, they ended up getting COVID or ended up getting contact tracing. So, so we know the pros of it. And so we just got to uh, be able to utilize those things because no one wants to miss a football game, especially, you know, if you're a guy that, that has a huge impact on the team. And most of the guys in the locker room do have a huge impact on the team. You know, we rotate a lot. So, you know, we can't really afford anyone to go down because if one goes down, then, you know, that could lead to contact tracing for two or three other guys. And now we're, you know, short. So, you know, we're, we are influencing each other to, to go get it. And, you know, it's a, it's a steady uh, conversation in the locker room. Also, I'm, I'm real curious uh, with OU getting ready to play uh, Gonzaga today. Uh, is there one player in the locker room that stands out to you that absolutely thinks he could help this basketball team, but he probably couldn't? Uh, I'll probably have to go with Nick Benito. He, he, I don't know if you guys, you know, follow him on Twitter or anything, but he, he thinks he's a sports analyst. So he feels like he has all the answers. He played basketball back, you know, when we were younger and things like that. He think he can, you know, make an impact on the basketball court today, but I highly doubt it, but it, it, I would have to go with Nick Benito. Thanks, Larry. Appreciate it, man. Mm -hmm. James Hale and then Barry Trammell. Hi, Delarian. Hope things are going well with you. Um, your running mate, Pat Fields, is going to miss most of the spring. So, uh, you know, you and him make calls. He makes a lot of calls. Talk about the adjustment you guys are going to have to make at the safety position. And with the new guys stepping in to replace him, Talk about that adjustment a little bit, and who's gonna who's gonna take up that responsibility? Uh, well, as a secondary, you know, we we can play any position back there. You know, Coach Gens can move me around a little bit. He can move Justin Burroughs around a little bit, Jeremiah Cordell around a little bit. Like so, so the communication part, you know, that that isn't gonna be difficult and things like that. Nobody but as you guys know, that that Pat is a tremendous leader, you know, for this team, and guys, you know, tend tend to follow his lead which is a great thing. So, you know, for right now, you know, we're, we're not having him around, 
So it's kind of like, you know, guys are going to have to step up to that leadership role. You know, even even guys, you know, even if they don't want to, you know, they still have to do it. So uh, kind of like myself, matter of fact, you know, today I had to say something to, to the defensive back group, you know, but usually, you know, Pat would do that. And so with him being out, you know, I wouldn't say it's a huge loss because all the guys know the defense. Guys can come in and produce, you know, th that's why we that's why we bring guys in. So we have more depth and, and guys are able to do that. So like like you said, uh, with the depth that we have and the defense being as easy as it is, the, communica the communication part won't, won't be as difficult. So we j I'm just excited to see what we can do as a, uh, as a unit. Have a great spring, man. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you. Barry Trammell and then Mason Young. Yeah, Delarian, you guys have improved quite a bit in the last couple of years defensively, but it looks like most Big 12 defenses are getting better um, across the conference. Do you see in the Big 12 that everybody's sort of gaining on the offenses after after the offenses were such high-powered three, four years ago? Right. I feel like, uh, you know, the defenses of the Big 12 are, are kind of just tired of the disrespect because, you know, <clears throat> we have guys in this league, you know, that can, that can make plays at the next level easily and that can easily, you know, make the teams in the NFL and, and, you know, actually produce for those teams. But, you know, we see schools like, you know, the SEC and things like that, like getting a lot of praise for their defenses. But, you know, once you actually, you know, put the numbers together within the conferences, you know, they're kind of the same. If not, if the Big 12, may, maybe the Big 12 has better numbers than those conferences. But, you know, it's kind of just like a, a disrespect thing for the defense of the Big 12 because, Whenever you think of the Big 12 or you hear someone talking outside of Big 12, they will easily tell you, you know, well, the Big 12 is the offensive league. So I feel like the defense of the Big 12 is just trying to change that narrative, you know, continue to get better year in and year out. Thanks, Delarian. Thank you. Hey, Delarian, got time for two more. We'll go to Mason Young and then Lee Benson. Yeah, Delarian, you guys on defense have a couple guys that play in front of you and Caleb Kelly and Jalen Redmond coming back this season. Just how much does that mean for you to have these guys back in practice right now and for the next year? Right. It's always good to get some old heads back in, man. You know, K Caleb Kelly, a tremendous leader for this defense also, not only the defense, but the team. Uh, another guy that's that's really good with the playbook, you know, understands the defense on and off the field. You know, it, it, it's a tremendous honor, you know, to be able to play with those guys. You know, the things that Jalen Redmond has went through, you know, with his sickness and all of that, you know, just happy to see him, you know, back on the field, being able to run around and being able to take the field with him and just compete with him is a huge honor because, you know, a lot of guys go through things, but not too many guys actually, you know, go through things like that. Like Caleb Kelly, for example, you know, towards ACL back to back, like not too many guys go through that. So just being able to be around those guys, see those guys smile and compete, you know, really makes me excited. All right, Lee, bring us home. All right, Delarian, I get the, the sense after the Cotton Bowl from uh, a lot of your teammates that you, you all kind of feel like going into this year that you're going to be pretty good this season. I know you've talked a little bit about, um, I think expectations maybe or mentioned it a little bit, but so, so simply, I'm just curious from your perspective and uh, I don't know if you can speak for the the entire defense, the entire team, but the, the vibe of the team, what are the expectations for Oklahoma in 2021? Uh, of course, you know, going out and, and winning the national championship, as you just said, but, you know, we can't be the same exact team that we were last year because the team last year only got us to, we're, we're only able to win a cotton ball, you know, bowl game. So, uh, you know, we, we can't we can't afford to to settle for that. You know, we can't get comfortable. The expectation is to get better. You know, we're going to push each other day in and day out every time we have a practice, even in the weight room. Like I'll see like a, a offensive guy hit a certain weight on bench press or squat or something like that. And then I'll see a defensive guy go right behind him and either do the same weight or, you know, up the weight. So, you know, just just being able to compete and make each other better because that's the only way that we're going to get better. You know, iron sharp is iron. So, you know, if if the defense is giving the offense, you know, a bad look one day in practice and then the offense is just scoring easily, in reality, that's not making them better. So we need we need to be able to push each other day in and day out in order for us to get better and, and move forward the, uh, the way that we know we can.